Okay, assalamu alaikum dear students. Okay, to, today we are uh, going to discuss a few more consequences of Cillo's theorem and one of which is if a subgroup K contains the normalizer of a Cillo P subgroup of a group G then K is its own normalizer, right? So K contains the normalizer of a Cillo P subgroup say you have a Cillo P subgroup H H is a Cillo P subgroup it's a Cillo P subgroup that's a SP it's a Cillo P subgroup and uh, K contains the normalizer of a Cillo P subgroup K so N is the normalizer of uh, N H in G, right? You have taken H as a Cillo P subgroup and N as the normalizer of H in G, where K contains the normalizer means that N is a subset of K. This is another condition you are given. Now look at here. H is a Cillo P subgroup. N is the normalizer of this uh, Cillo P subgroup H, and secondly you are given that this normalizer is contained in K. If a subgroup K contains the normalizer of a Cillo P subgroup of a group G, then K is its own normalizer. So you have to show that the normalizer of K is K itself, right? So we need to show, you have to show that normalizer of K in G is equal to k. If you put back the value, okay, this this is the desired result. You need to show that the normalizer of k is k itself. And what is k? Well, k is a subgroup which contains the normalizer of a Cillo P subgroup. This means that. If the normalizer of a Cillo P subgroup is contained in a subgroup K, then the normalizer of K is K itself. Okay? So we can see with the help of examples, right? If you take uh, C12, let G is equal to C12, then order of G is equal to order of C12, which is 2 square into 3 so you, you can have a Cillo P subgroup you can have a Cillo P subgroup of order 4 you pick any H order of H is equal to 4 then you know that uh, if uh, G is a cyclic group and D is a divisor of the order of G then G contains exactly one subgroup of order D right so if order of H is equal to 4 then there is exactly one subgroup of order 4 so H must be uh, this imply H must be E A cube A6 A9 yes this would be your H okay and then you choose any subgroup, uh, then find its normalizer. Then find its normalizer. So uh, you take a K would be the uh, subgroup which contains its normalizer. So here, normalizer of H in C12, which is your capital N, and you know that. The normalizer of a cyclic group is the entire group. This is equal to C12. I mean, those, this is equal to C12. Those elements of C12 which permute with all the elements of these, and you know that uh, uh, it's a cyclic group. So, when you multiply by an element of a cyclic group, in fact, uh, you are adding the powers and uh, addition is commutative 
So because this is so easy to see that uh, it's normalized in C12. Now this is the only possibility that you can choose K is equal to C12. Any other K will not serve, right? Because the condition is K contains the normalizer. So you can choose here K. If you take K is equal to C12, if you take K is equal to C12, then it is very trivial. Then of course, uh, normalizer of C12 in C12 is C12. Normalizer of G in G is G, there is no problem, okay? So, in this case, you have no possibility of such a K other than C12 because the condition is K must contain the normalizer of a silo P-sub group. So, you have chosen a silo P-sub group. Now, again, if you choose a silo P-sub group of order 3, then what would happen? See again, uh, if you choose... See the P sub group. If we take H, order of H is equal to 3, then H must be E A4 and uh, 3 A4 A8. So you, again, you have the same example, same, because the normalizer uh, of the subgroup of a cyclic group is the entire cyclic group. So we will not work for this. Now choose some other example. Again here, normalizer of H in C12 is C12. So C12 is the only possibility for K. Now choose some other example. You take uh, S3, you know S3 is equal to A, B, such that A cube, B square, A, B square is equal to E. And take a silo P subgroup, you take uh, H, which is equal to A, B, and you know that it's a silo P subgroup. In our previous lecture, we have shown that it's a silo P subgroup for the two. And you know that there are uh, there are uh, uh, three silo P subgroups of order two and they are conjugate to each other, right? So, can you find the normalizer? Normalizer of H in S3, those elements uh, of S3 which permute with this H means to say G belong to S3 such that GH is equal to HG. So look at here, of course, uh, uh, H is always a subset of the normalizer because these elements are always satisfying the condition. So that's why H is always a subset of the normalizer, right? In fact, a subgroup. So E here, now B is also an element. Look at A. Can you find A? A H is equal to AB and HB is equal to BA, and you know that in S3, AB is not equal to BA, right? So, uh, from here, you can check. E belong to NH, S3, say this is capital N, so E belong to N. Now, A does not belong to N, you know that AB is not equal to BA in S3, so if AH, a8 will give you AB and HA will give you BA and AB is not equal to BA that's why A is not an element of N. If A is not an element of capital N then A into A square. This is also not an element of so this imply A square does not belong to N higher B belong to N since A, B belong to N and A does not belong to N. So AB is not an element. Also you see that AB into B square, that is A. And B into AB, that is something else. That's why uh, AB does not belong to, AB does not belong to capital N. And if, if AB is not an element of this, that's why A square is not an element of N. 
and uh, b is an element of n so because uh, a square b is not an element of n so a square b does not belong to n now look at here the normalizer of uh, this h is in fact h itself and also you have shown that uh, in previous example that uh, uh, their normalizer or they are it, itself or the normalizer so this is equal to h which is equal to e b now choose k so there is a possibility of choosing k you can have 2k one is uh, h itself and the other is uh, s3 so there is no other group which contains e b because uh, uh, the other groups are e a b e a square b and the third one is e a a square b so because uh, this h is not contained in any other subgroup other than h and the s3 itself so in either case you will get the theorem right Now, if k is equal to h, then normalizer of k in G, in fact, normalizer of h in G, which is equal to h, which is equal to k. So, because our theorem is true. And similarly, if k is S3, then again you have normalizer of k S3. 3 in G, you know, is S3, which is equal to, of course, uh, K. So, in either case, you have the theorem, right? Now, we are going to prove this theorem in a simple fashion. Let uh, proof. Let H be a silo P subgroup in G and H is contained in K. And you have to show that. Uh, normalizer of k in g is equal to k so one thing is very much clear that k is contained in this because you know that uh, normalizer always contain k as a subgroup right so one thing is very much clear clearly let uh, n is equal to, uh, sorry, here, here you are given that n is contained in k, where n is equal to n h in g. You are given that. You have taken uh, H as a silo P subgroup in G, and you are given that N is contained in K, where N is the normalizer of H in G. But you have to show that normalizer of K in G is equal to K, right? So clearly. K is contained in normalizer of k in g this is number one and conversely you take an element of this and try to show that this is also an element of k right so let uh, x belong to n k g then h 
x k k x this is by definition so this imply k is equal to x k x inverse you multiply by this x inverse on either side on both sides so k is equal to say number 2 okay so you have k is equal to x k x inverse but you need to show that uh, k x belong to capital k you need to show that x belong to capital k how we can show this since n is equal to n h in g so this imply h is contained in n one thing also n is contained in k right we are using the definition since norm n is the normalizer of h in g and you know that normalizer always always contain h contains h so h is contained in n and you are given that n is contained in k so because h is contained in k hence h is contained in k right since h is contained in k so this imply x h x inverse is can contain in x k x inverse what i have done i am doing nothing but since h is contained in k so you can multiply pre and post multiplication by x and x inverse so this the symbol will retain will uh, uh, will be the same right so this uh, a, since h is is a subset of k so this set is a subset of this set there is no problem no ambiguity right but this is equal to k by 2 so this imply x h x inverse is contained in k yes you are at the step now you know that uh, uh, h is contained in k and h is a silo piece of group in k also x h x inverse is contained in k and you know that uh, this is also a silo piece of group because order of this is order of h and you know that uh, two silo piece of groups uh, in a group uh, g are conjugate to each other now since uh, say number 3 now since h is a silo piece of group in g and h is contained in k so it is silo p sub group in k as well also by 3 also by 3 x h x inverse is contained in k x h x inverse is a silo 
subgrouping H. You know that uh, the order of X H X inverse is equal to order of H. Uh, as order of H is equal to order of X H X inverse. Also, you know that it is a subgroup with the same order, so it must be the Sillopi subgroup, right? But by Silo's second theorem, you know that uh, any two Silo P subgroups are conjugate to each other. But by Silo second theorem, but by Silo's second theorem, x, h, x inverse, and h must be conjugate to each other. conjugate to each other in K, right? Okay, you have shown that X, H, X inverse is a silo P subgroup in K and also you have taken H uh, as a silo P subgroup in D since H is contained in K, so H is a silo P subgroup in K as well and also you have shown that X, H, X inverse is, is a silo P subgroup in K as well this means that this subgroup and H are conjugate to each other. That is, then there, then there must be, then, uh, or you, you can say directly, then. Y X H X inverse Y inverse must be equal to H for Y belong to K. Okay. Of course, uh, you can find some such a Y which is providing the relation. You know, the, you, this is equal to some. You take this is equal to some T. If T and H are conjugate in K, then there must be some Y. Then for some y, for some y belong to k, then x, if this is your capital T, you say this is equal to x, h, x inverse is equal to capital T, and you are saying that T and h are conjugate to each other, this means that y, t, y inverse must be equal to h. This is what I am saying. Since you have shown that it is a subgroup in K, silo P subgroup in K, also H is a silo P subgroup in K, and you know that any two silo P subgroups in a group G are conjugate to each other. So, because this is conjugate to H, this means that you can always find some Y belong to capital K, so that Y, this is equal to Y inverse. So, this is Y y x h x inverse y inverse is equal to h this imply y x h y x inverse is equal to h right from here look at here uh, this imply y x h is equal to h y x Say this is an element. Look at here. So y a y x is permuting with the elements of capital H. This means that y x is an element of the normalizer capital of H in G. This implies y x belongs to capital N, which is equal to N H in G. So this implies y x belongs to capital N which was contained in K. So this imply Y X belong to K. So this imply X belong to Y inverse K. And you know that K is a subgroup and Y is an element of K. So because Y inverse is an element of K, so Y inverse K must be equal to capital K. Right? But uh,
बट y इनवर्स k इज इक्वल टू k सिंस y बिलोंग टू k हेंस x बिलोंग टू y इनवर्स k व्हिच इज इक्वल टू k दिस इंप्लाई x बिलोंग टू k एंड x वाज द आर्बिट्ररी एलिमेंट ऑफ द नॉर्मलाइजर ऑफ k इन g सो नॉर्मलाइजर ऑफ k इन g इज कंटेन इन k एज़ वेल दिस शोस दैट So this imply normalizer of k in G is contained in K since x was arbitrary in N K G. Consequently. And normalizer of k in G is equal to k, right? It's a very simple proof. Okay, next uh, we have a very simple problem from this result. We can easily prove. Next problem. normalizer of a silo piece of group the normalizer of a silo piece of group of a group G Is its own normalizer. Is its own normalizer. Now this is so easy. You take uh, a silo P subgroup H, that is silo P subgroup. S P stands for silo P subgroup. I am just taking a symbol. If H is a silo P subgroup and N is the normalizer of H. In G, and if you take the normalizer of this normalizer, which must be N itself, so the normalizer of N H in G is in fact N H in G. That is normalizer in G. So normalizer in G of N. Is equal to n. Say this is equal to n star. So this is n star is equal to n star, right? If H is a silo B subgroup in a group G, then you take n star as a normalizer of H in G. Then it is so easy now to show that the normalizer of this n star, which was n H in G. The normalizer of an H in G, in G, is in fact an H G. That is, the normalizer of n star in G is n star. Right? Now this is so easy. You take k is equal to capital N. Of course, uh, then n is contained in n itself. Okay. So this proof is easy. To prove this. Uh, let uh, H be a silo P subgroup of a group G, and N is you take normalizer. Of H in G, take uh, K is equal to N. Then it is clear 
that n is contained in k right now the conditions for the last theorem is clear so normalizer of k in g is k right you take this take a h as a normal silo p subgroup of a group g and you take n as a normalizer of h in g right take k is equal to capital n right then clearly since every uh, set is a subset of itself so n is contained in k and you know that by last term if k is any subgroup which contains the normalizer of a silo p subgroup then the normalizer of k in g is in fact the k itself hence by last theorem hence by so by last theorem normalizer of k in g is equal to k now putting the value of k which was your capital n so this imply normalizer of n in g is equal to k is equal to of course n and what was n you just substitute the value of n back so this imply normalizer or normalizer of h in g in g is equal to normalizer of h in g so what does it mean this means that the normalizer of the normalizer of a silo p subgroup is itself right means say if h is a silo p subgroup in g and n is the normalizer of h in g then the normalizer for n is n itself right now we move to next result Next result is if P is a pillar, silo, uh, a P subgroup, fair on. If capital P is a P subgroup of G, and is contained in exactly one silo p subgroup h of g and is contained in exactly one silo p h of g then normalizer of p in g is contained in normalizer of h in g right right this is very easy if p is a p subgroup here capital p i am using capital p for p subgroup and small p for p prime number. Right. If P is a P subgroup of a group G, and a finite group G, of course G is finite. Of a finite group G, of a finite group G, and is contained in a exactly one silo P subgroup H. This means that this capital P is contained in exactly one silo P subgroup. We already have shown that every P subgroup is contained in a silo P subgroup. Now there is a and there is a condition that if your p group is contained in exactly one silo p subgroup then its normalizer is contained in the normalizer of h in g right so uh, it's so easy you take an element of this and try to show that this is also an element of this right so let's uh, prove Let x belong to n p g. So this imply 
x p must be equal to p x. So this imply p must be equal to x p x inverse. Say number one. Okay, this is very easy condition. Next is <clears throat> now you are given that also P is contained in H. You are given that P this P subgroup is contained in H. It's contained in exactly one pseudo P subgroup H. So this imply, this imply, x p x inverse is also contained in H, right? Is contained in x h. Again, uh, you are using pre and post multiplication of x and x inverse respectively. Uh, since p is contained in H, so x p x inverse is contained in x h x inverse. Well, and what is this? This is by 1 is equal to P. So this imply P is contained in X H X inverse. This is number 2. Now look at since H is a silo P subgroup and order of X H X inverse is also is equal to order of H and it is very much clear that X H X inverse is also a silo P subgroup. Now since uh, P is contained in H and also P is contained in this, but you are given that P is contained in exactly one silo P circle of H and G. This means that this must be equal to capital H, right? Now I am writing this. This is so easy. Since H is a see the P subgroup of G and order of X H X inverse is equal to order of H. So X H X inverse is also P subgroup in G as <coughs> that H and X H X inverse both contains capital P. You have established since you have taken H uh, is contain uh, P is contained in H and also you have shown that P is contained A X H X inverse. But you are given that uh, P is contained in exactly one pseudo P subgroup. But it is given that P is contained in exactly one pseudo P subgroup. of G. Hence, we must have when both are equal. H is equal to X, H, X inverse. Look at this. You know, it, it is given that P is contained in exactly one silo P subgroup H. And also you have shown that P is contained this 
and this is also a syllopy circle. So to retain the given condition, you must have the equality between these two. So H is equal to XH, X inverse. What does it mean? This means that so this imply H X is equal to X H. This imply X belong to N H in G. You know, uh, if X H is equal to X H, uh, H X is equal to X H, mean that X is permuting with all the elements of H. That's why, in fact, X is an element of the normalizer. So this implies NPG is contained in an H in G since X was arbitrary. Yes, it was a simple result. Now we have some more results which are a little more hard than this. Okay, this completes the proof because our target was to show that uh, x is an element of this normalizer. So the a normalizer of p in G is subset of normalizer of h in G since x was arbitrary. Okay, now we have another theorem. What is that theorem? This theorem is. Let uh, G be group of order PQ order PQ PQ are distinct primes and P greater than Q P greater than Q and PQ are primes that A belong to G of order P then H is equal to A Sorry, that a power p is equal to 1 is normal in g. Okay, let g be a group of order p, q, where p and q are distinct primes. You choose any two p, uh, p, q, like, uh, you know, order of s3 is equal to 6, which is equal to 2 into 3. And here 3 is greater than 2. Okay, you check. If you can find an element of order 3, yes, you have an element of order 3. A belongs to S3, and you know order of A is equal to 3. Then this group, H, which is A side that A cube is equal to 1, this is in fact normal in S3. Okay, you have a very simple consequence and very elegant, very beautiful result. Yes. You can find uh, a normal subgroup directly from this condition, right? You find the group, the order of group is PQ, where P is greater than Q, and PQ are primes. If you can find an element of, and this is true that, you know by Cauchy's theorem, uh, if uh, P is a divisor of the order of a group G, then there is always an element of order P in G. Then you can always find an element of order. This is this was Cauchy's theorem, Cauchy's second theorem, Cauchy's first theorem. First was for abelian, and second was for non-abelian. So in general, whenever you find P as a divisor of the order of a finite group G, then you can always find an element of order P in G, right? So uh, this A belongs to G of order P always exists, right? Whenever you are taking PQ. And also you know that by Silo's theorem, Silo's first theorem, if uh, P is a divisor of the order of the group, then there exists a Silo P subgroup. Of course, this is also a Silo P subgroup. Thus, to show that this is normal in G, the previous story is simple, 
you know that uh, uh, it is a silo p subgroup if it is a silo p subgroup then you you need to show that this is unique mean to say there is no other subgroup of order p if you can show that this is the only subgroup of order p then those this would be the unique this would be the unique uh, subgroup of order p uh, that's why this must be normal in g okay let's prove this proof to show that h is normal in g it is sufficient to show that it is sufficient to show that h is the only p subgroup in g of order p h is the only subgroup of order p in g right if you can show that h is the only Uh, p subgroup of order p in g then it would be so easy to show that uh, it is normal in g i can show also right in uh, beside the concept of uh, silo theory we can show because you know that uh, if h is a silo p subgroup uh, is the only silo p subgroup of order p then you know that g h g universe is always a, a p subgroup is always a p sub because this order is also order uh, order of h which is equal to p and uh, you have shown that uh, h is the only uh, subgroup of order p is a p subgroup of order p this means that h must be equal to g h g inverse this means that uh, h is normal in g right so the target is to show that first we will claim that there is a subgroup of order p in g then you will uh, provide the contradiction this means that there does not exist any other subgroup of order p right so uh, you you assume suppose k is another subgroup of order p suppose if possible k is another subgroup of order p right we claim that uh where where the h is not equal to k of course when you want to show that uh h is the only subgroup of order p in g then you if you are taking k then you you must write that h is not equal to k okay we claim that order of h intersection k is equal to identity right first we are going to prove this uh, why we are uh, proving this because we want to hit uh, we want to provide a contradiction against the order of g because in this way if uh, their intersection is e then uh, of course uh, the product hk must contain p square element and since uh, p is greater than q so p square must be greater than pq which is the order of g which would be a contradiction right so that's why this is very important to show that h intersection k is equal to e because if you are taking h intersection k is equal to e then you are saying that there is no element common to each so because both are uh, both are uh, subgroups of subgroups of order p so because the complex h k capital h capital k must contains uh, p square element right right and from here you can easily show that uh, p square is in fact uh, 
is uh, greater than the order of g which would be a contradiction right so let's do this let uh, x belong to h intersection k where x is not equal to e then t is equal to x psi dx explore p is equal to e is a subgroup is a p subgroup of both h and k yeah why why we are writing this this is so easy you know that h is a p subgroup is a cyclic is a p sub group and k is also a p sub group and h in just h intersection k is a sub group of a p sub group so h intersection k must be a p sub group the sub group of a and also you are saying that h intersection k is not equal to e if this is not the case then h intersection k must be a sub group other than one but you know that that only divisors of p are one and p itself if this is not the case that h intersection k is the identity element then h intersection k must be must have uh, order p right so also you know that h is a cyclic subgroup and every subgroup of a cyclic group is cyclic you can also state this logic but we don't need right and that's why x uh, must be since the x is an element of h as well so x is in fact some powers of a right so that's why uh, instead of uh, you know instead of uh, taking identity if you take x uh, then x power p must be equal to e the logic is that the logic is that uh, h is a p group h is a p group k is a p group so h into this this imply h into section k is a p group since h into section k since uh, h into section k is not equal to identity so and h into section k and h into section k is a sub group of h so this imply order of h into section k must be equal to p right therefore you can write a T uh, as I get x x power p is equal to e. Okay, this means that uh, T is a subgroup generated by x of order p, where uh, uh, T is a subgroup of H. And you know that uh, if uh, uh, the order of a subgroup is the order of the group itself, then both coincide. Okay, since uh, T is a subgroup of H and order of T is equal to order of H. So T is equal to H. Similarly, T is equal to K. So both imply H is equal to K, a contradiction. Look at here. If X is not equal to E, then of course. Uh, you can find a subgroup generated by x and this is this must be true that x power p is equal to e because this is a subgroup of a p group you know h is a p group k is a p group so their intersection is a p group and if this intersection is not equal to e so this intersect and a, this is a subgroup so this intersection must be equal to p because the by lagrange theorem the order of the subgroup is a divisor of the order of a group finite group g 
So that's why the order of each intersection must be equal to P. If it is not one, that's why this T generated by X must coincide with H and also coinciding with K. From here, H is equal to K. But you have taken H is not equal to K. So this is a contradiction. Okay. What does it mean? This means that our claim is true. H intersection K is the identity element. Right. Hence, H intersection K is equal to E. No, no, uh, you know, if H intersection K is equal to E, then uh, the product HK, of course, which is a subset of G as well, contains. Uh, uh, p square elements and we will show that these all p square elements are distinct then hk which is equal to uh, say uh, hk h belong to hk belong to k contains contains p square element p square distinct elements further wise some h k would be equal to some h 1 k 1 ok I am saying that uh, this set containing all the different elements, distinct elements. If this is not the case, some HK must be equal to some H1, K1, where uh, H, H1 belong to capital H and K, K1 belong to capital K. So this implies that H1 inverse H must be equal to k1 k inverse so this imply this is h belong to h1 inverse h which is equal to k1 k inverse this belong to k now look at since h and k both are subgroups so this is an element of capital h and this one is an element of capital h so this is an element of capital h this being equal to this this is also an element of capital H, right? And since this is an element of capital K, so being equal to this, this is also an element of capital K. This means that both are elements of H intersection K. And you know that H intersection K is equal to identity, so both equal to E. This means that H is equal to H1 and K is equal to K1. Hence, this representation is unique. So, there are P square distinct elements, okay? But then H1 inverse H belong to H intersection K and K1, K inverse belong to H intersection K, which is identity, which is identity. So this imply H1 inverse H is equal to E and K1, K inverse is equal to E. So this imply H is equal to H1 and K is equal to K1. Hence, all the P square elements in HK are distinct. Hence, hence uh, all P square elements in HK are distinct, but HK is a subset of G, you know, whatever H and K, because in H and K both are subgroups of G, so the product elements must be in G as well, that's why order of HK is contained 
is a subset of G. So uh, this imply order of G must be greater or equal to order of H K, right? Since uh, order of uh, H K is a subset of G, so order of G or you can say order of H K must be less than order of G. But what is order of H K? Which is equal to P square. Which is equal to P square. Hence order of G must be equal to P square. At least P square. This implies order of G greater than equal to P square. Now say star. Uh, since P is greater than Q, so this imply P square greater than PQ. This imply uh, order of G is greater than PQ a contradiction against the fact order of GQ was PQ. Okay. Now look at this. So why you are pro providing this contradiction? Because you have taken two subgroups, two P subgroups of order P. This means that there does not exist any other subgroup of order P subgroup of order P. So this means that there is a unique P subgroup of order P, right? Hence. There does not exist any other P subgroup K in G that is H is the only P subgroup in G. Okay, one thing. Now, I am giving you a very detailed logic to show that uh, uh, H is normal in G. Now, since G H G inverse is a subgroup of G for all G belong to G. You know, this is a subgroup for G belong to G. And G H G inverse is equal to order of H. So G H G inverse is a P subgroup. You know this was P. So G H is a P subgroup of order P in G this clearly shows that implies that G H G inverse would be equal to H so this implies G H is equal to H G for all G belong to G, so this implies H is normal in G. And also by Silo's theorem, Silo's third theorem, uh, Silo's first theorem consequence, because H is a uh, unique Silo uh, P in G, so it must be normal, right? So you can use the either way. Okay, so in this uh, result, this was very easy. If uh, G is a group of order PQ where P and Q are primes and P is greater than Q, then there must be uh, a normal subgroup uh, of order P in G. You know, by Cauchy's theorem, you can always find an element of order P. So with the help of that element, you are generating a group H. A sided A power P is equal to one. This is a P subgroup in G. So we have shown that this is the only P subgroup in G and from here it was so easy to show that G H is normal in G. Okay students, uh, 
uh, you try to understand the results and if you are finding any problem you can write uh, you can text me on my channel thank you very much Allah Hafiz